Now I'd like to thank everybody for stopping back by the Raider Critique. And in this episode, we are going to go over, well, the reason why I'm even here is basically to talk about the news that actually happened today. Now it seems like that everybody is talking basically about how this football team is going to get whipped by the Kansas City Chiefs. Well, that actually probably ain't going to happen as bad as we thought it was going to happen now because, well, we've got something going on here now. Kareem Hunt, the Kansas City Chief running back, has been released. So that's one less weapon that we have to deal with this Sunday. And it seems like that the only good news who has anything to say about this is for the Raiders. Because Patrick Mahomes, Tyreek Hill, Kareem Hunt, and Travis Kelsey, well, that's really bad compared to just Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, and Tyreek Hill. So at least we will be able to focus on one less thing one less weapon that this beastly Chiefs have had. I mean, let's just be serious about it. Their defense is a little suspect, although they do have Eric Berry coming back. But man, this actually does bode a little bit better for us than what it did before this guy was removed from the football team. Now, of course, we're the only ones getting good news out of all this. The Everybody else involved with this situation, which of course this is not Raider news, this is basic football news, because it, it came out this morning, that the NFL and the Chiefs have known about this incident for the past 10 months, and did not say anything or do anything until the video from TMZ surfaced. Now, everybody in this situation that everybody involved, I, I really do, uh, it's just a tragedy. It's an absolute tragedy. This is not a good look for the NFL after everything the NFL has already gone through since 2016. It has been a downhill slope for the NFL. They're losing fans, and they just started gaining some traction back. Most of us started coming back. Most of us started going and checking out the games, buying memorabilia, you know, and, you know, starting to spend our money back on our football teams again, and then some things, and then this happens. Now, the NFL obviously did not learn from the first time. They did not learn from the Ray Rice situation because they handled it the same exact way. They waited almost 11 months before anything was done. Kareem Hunt was sent to the commissioner's non-exempt list and then 30 minutes later released by the football team after the video surfaced. Now, I feel bad for the victim and I don't know if Kareem Hunt is innocent or guilty but from the look of that video he's obviously guilty because you don't put your hands on a female even if you know i mean it is what it is the, the the woman did hit him first and no charges were filed but it's just it's it's things like this we we really do need there's got to be some boundaries you know and these guys are making so much money and they act like they're above everything. They're not getting in trouble for it. And then video surfaces like this. And then they're getting jettisoned right out of the league. Don't expect to see this guy back. I expected to see Ray Rice back. You know. And he never came back. And I just have a feeling that if Ray Rice never came back. This guy probably won't either. You know. But only time will tell. And you know. More of this story will surface. But I just, you know, it. the NFL should be ashamed of themselves. For one, holding on to this information for as long as they did without any actions. How are you going to protect your integrity of the shield? 
if you guys keep doing shit like this. This is not a very good business move. And I know that there are a lot of players to monitor and keep track of in the NFL. There's thousands. You know. And. But you can't let shit like this slide. You can't do it. So now the. And Kansas City, they knew about it too for 10 months. I mean, this just seems like another episode of the NFL pushing their weight around, sweeping everything under the rug until videos resurface or videos surface, and then they are forced to do something about the situation. And it's always the person that does the the crime or uh, the incident that's always a part of the incident that winds up be being the fall guy and then the NFL and the team are liable. If you guys knew about it for 10 months, all right, how do you think that makes that, how do you think that makes you look? All right, the NFL's already not doing, you know, they're just barely getting out of the bullshit they had that happened to them in 2016. And then you guys, <laughs> you guys are just going to let this happen again? <laughs> Unbelievable. So anyway, let's actually go over here and talk about what I really wanted to talk about because this is actually more Raider-related news than the last subject that I was just talking about. And it actually hits really close to home for me. And this is why. All right, Amari Cooper was one of my favorite wide receivers. As a matter of fact, I've always been a huge Amari Cooper fan ever since we drafted him. You know, he was the definite guy that I wanted to be, who wanted the, who I wanted to lead the wide receiver core into the future. His rookie season, man, this dude was bomb. The guy would jump up and make make catches, just unbelievable catches out of the air, man. He made Derek Carr look so good that year. You know? And I don't know what the hell happened to him after that. The guy disappeared. He would show up for two games and be missing for 14, and he's been doing that for the last three seasons. Hasn't said a single solitary word. Okay, in the four-year tenure that he was with us, he never said a single solitary ill word, at least from what we could hear toward any other opposing team, his own team. He never griped about the players on the team, never griped about the coaching staff. He was always a model individual. Kind of reminded me of like a a modest Jerry Rice-style wide receiver, but just wasn't that good. I don't get it. I guess it's because everybody likes to come and shit on the Raiders. Bruce Irvin running around in Atlanta. Yelling about how he's free. Still hasn't gotten a single solitary win since he's gotten over there. And you got guys like Amari Cooper. Who basically... Say, oh, well, now that I'm not a part of the organization anymore and I'm all the way across the country, I'm going to say things like this. And I'm going to read the headline to you. It says, Amari Cooper says he wasn't really happy with Raiders playing with more passion since trade to Cowboys. This statement right here is a direct insult and a smack to the face. To number one, the Raiders organization. Number two, his ex-teammates that who are still playing with the Raiders who believe in the Raiders franchise. Number three, the coaching regime that brought him in because they believed that he was a lifelong Raider. And the coaching regime now who believed that they, they were going to use him as the focal point of our offense. 
And last but not least, for all of us fans, the ones who were critical of you and the ones who backed you, every single person in the Raider Nation was just basically smacked in the face by this man. Now, I, for one, I'm not happy about it. Okay? I feel like an idiot because I backed this dude. And I did. I backed this guy. I would go into the chat rooms. Anybody talking shit about him, I would say something to them like, man, hey, you, you know, just get off of Coop. You know, Coop's, Coop's doing what he's got to do. He, he's going to come around sooner or later. You know, man, I started running out of excuses for this cat. I made so many excuses for him. Well, now I understand why he wasn't doing so damn well. Because when you lose your passion to play the game, you're not going to try hard. And it did. It Literally, his rookie season, the guy was raw. He was doing everything he could to make the catches. Make the, Man, we didn't see that again after that first season. Ever since week three of 2016, this whole team has been a dumpster fire. And we have not rebounded from it. You know? That in itself is heartbreaking. But to have your favorite wide receiver of this generation come out and say that he wasn't happy with your favorite favorite football team the team that you will ride or die for that you weren't happy here when we wanted to give you everything we wanted to make you the focal point of the offense we were going to give you everything on a silver platter all we asked for you to do was to show up to the games and perform so now you want to get halfway across the country and you want to smack everybody in the face who believed in you I've only got two words for you, Amari. Good riddance. We didn't need anybody like you anyway with no heart who had no intentions of being a Raider for life. And you ain't done nothing but prove to me that you're nothing but that you're, I don't like what's going on. I'm going to take my ball and go home kind of individual. That's exactly what you are. So as far as I'm concerned, when I sat there and told you, hey, uh, I hope you do well in Dallas and you're, uh, you know, I wish you luck in your future endeavors and uh, I hope you can continue your professionalism and your career throughout this, uh, the state of Texas. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm rescinding all of that now. I hope you fail. I hope you fail miserably. I hope that you do so well this season that Dallas gives you all that money. And then you just fall apart right in front of their eyes the same way you did to us. And then they can you three years into your contract. And you don't find another job with another NFL team again. That's exactly how I feel now. And I'm not going to change my mind. You know that term, once a Raider, always a Raider? Not for you, Mr. I'm going to take my ball and go home. Well, take your ball and go home, bitch. Go have fun with those fucking happy clappers over in fucking Dallas, dude. I hope you enjoy fucking goddamn performing for nothing but fucking rich people. Because that's all fucking Dallas fans are, basically. Those are the only ones who can afford to go to the fucking games. Way to go there, buddy. You changed the fu- You changed fucking from the goddamn working class, the motherfuckers who actually fucking make this world go around, to the fucking punk motherfuckers who were trying to sink it. This is the Raider Critique, man. I'm signing out of here. Fuck this guy.